Hello everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel, and welcome to Kathy Rain. Uh, this is uh, an ad adventure game that I want to play with you guys. Um, this is an indie game, but it is not an early access game. This is actually uh, a fully made, ready to be released uh, indie game. Uh, the developer is Clifftop Games, and the publisher is Raw Fury, and it's going to be available May 5th. And it's a pretty interesting game. It has a more of an adult theme. It is uh, it, it it kind of tackles elements and issues that a lot of other games would would avoid or not even try to you know uh, really incorporate into the game. So the developer for the game, also the writer Joel Joel Staff Hosto, I believe is his name. He uh, he wrote this. A uh, story of about a, uh, a young woman in a college girl who has a troubled past and uh, somebody who has to go on and deal with some real shit and uh, it, it's taken Joel about three years to craft this journey and uh, we hope that uh, it will resonate the same way the story with 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 all of us with me and you guys watching it and uh, Without further ado, I, I'm just going to jump into the game. I don't know exactly how it plays. I've seen some trailers for it. I am very excited. I think the art looks great. And let's let's give it a shot. And I uh, hope you guys would join me in this adventure right now. Let's see. Hey, you. Uh, hey. Oh, man. Oh god, this is so comfy. I'm just gonna lie here and suffocate on my own vomit now. I, uh, I had a thing I wanted to tell you. Uh-huh. This room sure looks different when it's spinning. So, I was browsing through the used book ads in the paper when I... Listen, Eileen, I'm totally excited about books right now, but... Wait, hear me out! So... I noticed this article about a war veteran from Conwell Springs who just died. I remembered that you used to live there and everything, and... Oh, how I wish for joyful, blissful sleep. A and get this! His name was Joseph. Joseph Rain. What did you just say? You knew him, right? I knew it! I knew you'd know him! He's my grandfather. I mean, she's super drunk. So she's all gonna be like, "Yeah, yes. he is was, was my grandfather." My grandmother. Hey, wait a minute! I never told you where I grew up. Oh well, I uh, well, I might have sort of looked you up. That is not cool, Eileen. Seriously, <laughs> I just couldn't help myself. Well, one of these days you're gonna help yourself to a restraining order. I'm just telling you this as a friend. <laughs> I know. Well, anyway, you should know that the funeral is tomorrow. Okay. Are you gonna go? I don't know. Good night, Eileen. <sighs> Good night, Kathy. September 25th, 1995. Day one. Day one of what? Oh, God, oh, make it stop. Do I actually click on it or look at it? Turn it off. Let's turn this damn thing off. My head is exploding. Looks like Eileen left a note for me here. Oh, she Hi, feels Kat. Much Since it's such a long drive, I set the alarm so you won't miss the funeral. Thank me later. E. I'm so getting a new roommate. <laughs> well, um, I guess I should get going. I'm late enough as it is. All right. Well bunch of things I can interact with. This is my, uh, I'm assuming it's my inventory. Notebook stun gun. Smart girl. Zippo lighter and pack of cigarettes. She's like this badass girl, you know, college girl, and she's super hip and awesome, and, uh, she also has a, a, Har a, a Harley, a Harley Davidson at the motorcycle, and she's, a uh, definitely kind of punky. Let's check her out. Let's check her out. Let's check out her notebook. Read notebook, combine notebook. 
think about notebook? I'll write down clues in this as I find them. I haven't written anything in it yet. Oh, okay. Uh, think about the stun gun. A girl can never be too safe. Right. A girl can never be too safe. I can tell you that too. We'll get it. NZ500 self-defense stun gun. Fully charged. Interesting. Okay. Lighter? The only thing my deadbeat dad left me. Damn. My trusty Zippo. Running a bit low on fuel. There's a crude inscription, BH, which is a mystery to me. Interesting. Why would it be a mystery to you? Started when I was 12 and never looked back. Pretty much the only thing keeping me sane. I guess that's, that's true a lot of, about My a lot of people. About a half a pack. Half a pack, all right. Half a pack of smokes and a little bit of Zippo lighter fluid in there. Okay, we can we can make do. All right, so do I want to interact with everything in here? Are you guys ready? Are you guys ready for a full-on adventure game? Oh, yeah, poster. That movie's not out yet. It's a promo poster Eileen got for being an extra. She tells everyone who walks in here the same joke. Spoiler alert, the boat sinks. Is that the Titanic poster? It is. That's like... It's it's them two holding each other like in the front of the bow and just you know doing the whole like spread my arms thing that Celine Dion's song just oh my goodness it's taking me back to my childhood <laughs> 1995 um I'm fairly sure it's about some guy who falls in love with his golden retriever oh my god I think these that are... movie is about a girl and a boy who hate each other at first and then they fall in love for no reason at all. Wow. Oh, wait. That's every romantic comedy ever. This is this is going to be a trip back to my childhood. Back to 1995 when I was a little baby. A little baby boy. I was like eight? Eileen makes her bed with surgical precision. Eileen's girly suitcase. There's a sticker on it with her full name. Eileen Mildred Summers. Mildred. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm gonna get it for that. I wish I could wrap up that fact and save it for Christmas. Oh, yeah, let's uh, check out the. We pink meet again, bear. Mr. Bear. Don't give me that look. It's not my fault you ended up so close to my lighter. Wait, what? She burned a bear? That is. That's crazy. Look at the closet. What's the closet? Eileen's about? closet. Filled to the brink with inherited clothes and Christian joy. Well, I have a knack for investigative work, but I don't know if I'm nosy and want to snoop around. Like, do I want to look into poor Eileen's closet? I don't, I don't think so. Makeup check, hair check, horrible mood, and contempt for humanity check. Nah, I'll, I'll leave it alone. I don't want to look inside your closet. That's, that's not nice. Color printer. Super fancy, apparently. A fact which Eileen loves to remind me of. Yeah, so don't don't waste the ink, yo. Think about computer. I'm no geek, but I know how to use one. A computer, that is. Not a geek. <laughs> Let's see what, what she thinks about the cross over here. <sighs> Honestly, she can believe in what she wants as long as she doesn't try to shove it down my throat. Oh, so she's either of, like, a different religion, or, or, she's an atheist. Eileen's schedule. There's a note for today. Set alarm clock for Kathy. Can't have her miss the funeral. Looks handcrafted. Probably something she made in woodworking class. Well, either her or one of her 12 siblings. Anything else curious here? Is there a little cubby here? Wait, alarm clock. Uh, computer? Is there anything else to do with the computer? Look at computer. Eileen borrowed it from school. She takes a bunch of computer classes. The Thing. One of my favorite horror movies. Oh, wow. What about... Ooh, electric guitar. Help me get rid of my last two roommates. I have one like that, too. Is that a... a that looks like a... Uh, what you call it? A, um, My electric guitar. Jesus. Got it cheap from a lesbian I met at a concert. <laughs> Good times. <laughs> no um, it's not an Epiphone SG. This is a. Uh, oh God, why? Are you serious? It's like. 
Uh, there's Gibson. What is this? What's the? F it's a Fender. It's a. It's a freaking Fender. Look at it. It's a red Fender. I hope she says Help it. Help me get rid of my last two roommates. But no, can you play it? I like that smile. She looks pretty. Nah, it's no fun when there's no one around to annoy with it. What? That's craziness. I would sit around and play my guitar all the time. Actually, alone. Pulp Fiction. Love that flick. Love that flick too. I actually watched Pulp Fiction like not two months ago. Just some random band poster. Just some random band poster. Really? I want to see it. What does this, what is? I can't, I can't recognize it from here. Is that? I don't know. All right. Uh, what else can we take a look at? I was, uh, my bed? My bed. Messy. Just the way I like it. Her bed. Eileen makes her bed with surgical precision. My bed. Messy. Just the way I like it. <laughs> anyway, um... So what if I use it? Do I lay down? Nah, I just got up. Well, I am your brain, basically. I'm telling you to use the bed. Nah, I just got up. Stop defying yourself, lady. Alright, let's go to the closet. Might I as can well certainly just see the appeal of blindly rummaging through Eileen's clothes, but seriously, I've got better things to exactly. do. Exactly! See, that's my point, too. Alright, let's go. It's a dream catcher. Catcher, your titties are like, you know, th th this is like the 90s game. This is everything the 90s was about. This is amazing. <laughs> dream catcher. All right, let's go. And her clothes, too. This is awesome. I'm enjoying it so far. A lot. Hold on. And that's her on the road. On her little Harley Davidson, and I think that we can go to the cemetery. Is this where the grandfather, or like maybe the, the I mean not the grandfather, the father, or maybe the grandfather too? Who knows? Let's check it out. Whose tombstones are we gonna come across? Well, here we are. God, I really need a smoke. Does anyone object? <laughs> Guess not. Dead people. Dead people rule. So she's a bit of a punk rock anarchist, kind of, you know, break the rules and, you know, will live for. Oh, tombstones. That was a very quick cigarette, lady. Um. Well, let's read the ones that we can read. No time for that now. I'm late for the funeral. Oh, the funeral's here right now. Oh, she traveled the whole way? Okay. Um, so let's go to the mausoleum. And uh, let's think about it first. A family mausoleum. The family must have been fairly rich. Those things don't come cheap. It says price. Oh no, price from Stump? No! Price! No reason to go in there. Oh, so where are we going? I'm, I'm a little confused. Do we use directions or something to walk? Do I... Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I thought we were going to the mausoleum or something. But, oh, here's the... Okay. I understand now. We are gathered here today to honor a person of great integrity. A pillar of the community and a decorated war hero. His name was Joseph Irving Rain. We all remember his warm heart, his compassion, and his eagerness to help others. His passing while our loss is surely heaven's gain. Now we entrust our brother Joseph to God's mercy. We commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, in sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our frail bodies so they may be conformed to his glorious body, who died, was buried, and rose again for us. To him be glory forever. Amen. Oh, <sighs> Kathy, you big baby, just talk to her. Who's that? Oh, her grandma. Maybe could could be a step grandma. 
Look at her. Mary Elizabeth Rain, my grandmother on my father's side. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, go talk to her. You don't like your grandma? Uh, excuse me, Mrs. Rain? Have we met, Anne? You look strangely familiar. It's me. It's Catherine. Catherine who? You don't recognize me? I guess it's been a while. I might be a bit taller than you remember me. Kathy? Bless my soul. Look at you all grown up. Oh, how I wish Joseph could see you now finally coming home. Let's hope he can. Wherever he is. A comforting thought, dear. Lord, how long has it been? Ten years? Fifteen? Fifteen sounds about right. I was six when Mom took me away. Goodness. We have some catching up to do then. <laughs> I want to know everything. Listen, I'm not quite ready to leave yet, but why don't you join me at the house in half an hour? Sure, I'd love to. I passed it on my way here. It shouldn't be too hard to find. I'll see you soon then. I'm so glad you found your way back home. I can't wait for us to have a chance to talk. Same here. See you in a bit. Poor grandma. <laughs> she's all happy that she's back and all. And she thinks that probably that she's so pure with innocent intentions and all. I mean, I guess she is, but she's been so disconnected from the rest of the family. And she's kind of like, uh, it's embarrassing for me to go talk to her. You know, she was like a little baby the last time that she saw her grandma. And she's like 21 now in smoking and drinking and partying and stuff. Um... Can I talk nah, to her? we can talk more later at the house. Okay, alright. So I'm not gonna object. Let's look at this, uh... Let's think about the grave first. Rest in peace, Grandpa. I wish things could have been different. The coffin is lowered, but the grave hasn't been filled up yet. Seventy-one is so young. My dad is gonna be seventy-one in just a couple of years, a few years. Yeah, more than a couple of years, but like soon. <laughs> Scary thought. I wouldn't doubt that these guys, these are actually people related to the developer of the game. It says price. Should we want to go in there? No reason to go in yeah, there. Okay. Oh, hey. So, I'm Father. I'm sorry for your loss. Thanks. If you wish to find God, the Church of the Holy Trinity is always open to you. Is that so? Here, have a brochure. It's never too late to turn away from the path of sin. Oh my god, let's, <laughs> let's go to option one. What makes you so sure I'm on, a, I'm on a sinful path, father? And what makes you so sure I'm on a sinful path, father? Wouldn't you say that prejudice is but a small step from the seven big ones? I simply meant that we are all sinful creatures, child. I hope to see you at the church. Don't get your hopes up, buddy. I'll pray for you. Oh my god. I wish you comfort in this time of grief. I I don't know if I would have like randomly called the dude like <laughs> so sarcastically like all right buddy <laughs> well you know I, I get her I must have been the same when I was like twenty one you're you're hot headed you know especially if you're if you're holding on to your beliefs that heavily and strongly well let's go to uh, Mrs Rain's residence right now. Grandma, anybody home? I mean, we kind of did leave before the grandmother left, so. <laughs> nice coat. black leather coat, right up my alley. Boots. A mere single pair of boots on display. Boy, do we live in different worlds. 
This paint looks fresh. Grandma must have had this restored recently. Cute red horse. It's some old Swedish thing, I think. I really like the sound of the uh, raindrops hitting the window. There's nothing quite like the soothing sound of rain falling on a window. <laughs> Seriously, right? Um, Dog painting. fighting. Grandpa used to love oh, yeah. that stuff. Yeah, by the way, for younger guys, if you don't know what dog fighting is, that, that's, uh, that basically refers to airplanes fighting. Huh. Never seen this around. Grandpa like must have planes. used it towards the end. An old wheelchair. Not too dusty. Probably used recently. Oh, that's even sadder. A small table lamp. A wedding photo from when my grandparents married. They look younger than I am now. Things have sure changed. Yeah, I get the same, the same feeling. Even when I look at my very parents' far photos. From way back. It says June 12, 1910 in the corner. <laughs> Some kind of winter forest scene. I've always wondered if it's supposed to be Conwell Woods or not. 1910 is, I think, the year my grandma... Uh, was born in. These should come in handy when I need to make calls. Alright, there's nothing more on this side. Uh, I could look at a phone too. These should come in handy when I need to make calls. <clears throat> what about the phone book? Oh, it's phone and phone book. Okay. Well, I'm not, I don't think I need to make a phone. Well, can I call the grandma? Does she have a cell phone in 1995? <laughs> Oh man, phone book. Searching I don't have anything book. to search for yet. Well, maybe I do. Your your I should be able to use this for looking up phone numbers of people or places in town. Correct. It's a phone book, Conwell Springs County. Can I call myself? Might want to pick up the handle first. All right. It's called the, the pizza place near my house. The number or code you've dialed is incorrect. Please check the number or code and... <laughs> okay. Hold on. Hold on. We gotta try this. Dorm room. Is Eileen there? I don't there? have anything to talk about with E right now. Alright. Okay. Okay. Well, let's go into the living room. What is going on here? Oh, oh hello, dear. Hey. I was just wondering what took you so long. Sorry, I couldn't resist taking that old wheelchair for a spin. <laughs> oh, don't give me that look. I put it back. You haven't changed one bit. Always kidding around, just like when you were little. Come have a seat. We have so much to talk about. So, now, tell me about your life in the city. Oh, there's not much to tell. I'm going to school for journalism. It's my second year. I ride a motorcycle in case you missed it there out front. Ah, oh, that's right. Just like your father. Yeah, I suppose. I must ask, have you heard anything from your father? Anything at all? No, nothing since he bailed way back then. I expected as much. He disappeared without a trace. No matter, that's ancient history. How Sharon, then? What? No reason to bring it up uh, right now. Mom's good, yeah. She's kind of between jobs right now, but things are okay. Yeah, you don't have to I'm worry, glad to hear an it. old woman. I was worried about how you two would cope in the city, considering Sharon's problems. Yeah, about that. I'm sorry I didn't visit sooner, Grandma. Mom, she told me all these horrible lies about you and Grandpa. When I was old enough to understand what she was doing, I felt like it was much too late. It wasn't your fault, dear. You were a child. I'm just happy that you're here now. Me too. So, what about you? How have you been doing all these years? 
I've been lonely ever since the accident. There's no denying that. What accident? Goodness gracious. Of course you don't know. She took you away before it all happened. Don't know what? I will never forget that dreadful day. August 16th, 1981. It was the middle of the night when Sheriff Truman knocked on our door. He had Joseph with him. I couldn't even recognize Joseph at first. All dirty and wet with an awful blank stare on his face, like his soul had been ripped from his body. Since that day, he never spoke a word, forever confined to that blasted wheelchair. Really? For all this time? I had no idea. It came as a shock to all of us. That's horrible, Grandma. I'm so sorry. Thank you, dear. Why yeah. do you think Grandpa suddenly left that night in 81? Yeah, what happened? I haven't the faintest idea. He acted very peculiar not long before it happened, disappearing for hours at a time. At first, I even suspected he was having an affair. When I asked him about it, he just said he was chasing old demons. It must have had something to do with the war. What did the doctors say? What did the doctors have to say about Grandpa's condition? Persistent vegetative state. That's what they call it. I've heard it all by now. One doctor said it was a stroke. Another claimed it was a seizure. The third hack tried to sell it off as a severe infection. It's all a load of tripe. I had an MRI performed on Joseph. It's one of those state-of-the-art head scans. Yeah, I've heard of them. Yes, well, according to the scan, his brain was completely intact. They thought it was a technical problem at the time, some kind of glitch. But the result was the same after three different scans on three different machines. Eventually, they had to confess that they simply had no credible explanation for the state he was in. Hmm. And this injury just happened to occur on the very same night he mysteriously disappears? Indeed. I refuse to believe it was a coincidence. Hmm. What about the police? What did Sheriff Truman have to say about the matter? Not much. He said they simply found Joseph in that condition on the outskirts of town. The sheriff was convinced there was some kind of foul play involved, but the investigation turned up nothing. He later said that he was sorry, but that he was forced to close the case. Could it be PTSD? Maybe it was post-traumatic stress disorder? Grandpa always had a hard time showing weakness. I don't know, dear. I I'm just speculating. I didn't think too much of it at the time. Joseph was a man of few words. I'm sure he just didn't wish to burden me with it, whatever it was. You know, I could try to find out more about this. You're welcome to try, dear. Some kind of closure would mean the world to me. Okay, I think I'll head over to the sheriff's station for a little chat then. Would be nice to witness police doing some actual police service for once. Sure, you go ahead. Let me know if I can be of any more help. Well, you know, that's uh, that's basically in her nature. I mean, she's a she's a young adult. She's twenty one year old, punky, college journalist who wants who's like all rebellious and stuff. You know, this is perfect for her. But I love her spirit. You I know? don't want to show her that. I don't. I don't want you to show her that either. What about this? Show, show her the stun gun. Show her the stun gun. I don't want to show her that. She'll just start worrying about me. Oh yeah. What about the Zippo? Would this have anything to do with? Would Would she know? I don't want to show her that. Why not? Let's just be like you know. I. This is a Zippo that I have had for the longest time, and it was. I don't know what the initials stand for. Can you can you light shed some light on it? I knew that I was going to be seeing you today. So can you help me, Grandma? I don't know. Church for sure. What do you think about this church, Grandma? They seem harmless to me, but they can be a bit pushy at times. Huh, you could say that. Handing out pamphlets at funerals is in pretty bad taste. Awfully strange behavior for a priest, I'll give you that. 
Well, um, you know, let's head out. Well, gotta go, Grams. Talk to you later. Bye, Kathy. Let's go find out a little bit more about what might be going on with the grandfather's case. Let's just take a look at this portrait. Grandpa here. in his Air Force uniform. Looks to be in his early 20s. I used to love digging through those drawers when I was a kid, looking for coins, buttons, and trinkets. Grandpa and me, we had this game where he would hide pennies around the house and I would go on a treasure hunt. Never in the attic, though. I thought it was too scary up there. <laughs> a robust piece of wooden furniture. Nice leather chair. Freckles, the old farm cat, used to love that thing. Nah, I'm more of a coffee gal. It is a coffee table. Why did you disagree, yo? <laughs> um, well, let's check out a bookshelf, and I think we should, be, should just head out. There's an old TV here, too. A decent-sized book collection. Most of them science or history related from the looks of it. Does she want some... Uh, does she want a drink? Huh. It would be kind of funny to see her reaction, but no. Haha. <laughs> yeah, I thought so. Expensive looking scotch. That thing has been standing there forever. Let's see what's going on upstairs. I shouldn't overstay my welcome. Oh, mom. okay. Alright. Well, well then. <laughs> We're heading out. Go to the sheriff station. See what's going on. Some young cop looks a bit familiar. Maybe old schoolmate or hey, something. Sheriff, what's the deal with that bum? What bum? The one in the cell. Oh, I thought it was with you. Well, shit. <laughs> Well, let's give him another minute. Let's see if uh, we find out anything more about this bum in the cell. How's the paperwork coming along, Lenny? Uh, okay, I guess. Maybe halfway through. That's no good. We're gonna have to cancel lunch today. <laughs> Again? Oh, man. <laughs> your motivation shouldn't be limited by your growling stomach. If you say so, boss. He said if the paperwork hasn't come along nicely today, we might have to cancel lunch. What an ass. Sup, young cub. Hi. Hello. <clears throat> I thought I he was- to commit a crime to get your attention? Because I seriously will. Ma'am, I'm really quite busy at the moment. Hey, wait. I know you. I'm pretty sure you don't. Yes, I do. You're Kathy. Kathy Ray From second grade! My reputation precedes me, in a kind of, but not totally creepy way. Aw, oh, come on, it's me, Lenny! Lenny Marks! Hey, Lenny! Um... No, I have no clue who I'm you are. drawing a blank. Really? You don't remember us playing when we were little kids? Not really. Sorry, buddy. Darn. Well, that's a bummer. Damn. Anyway, what can I do for you today? <laughs> uh, I mean, it is pretty bad. I've I've had moments like this with some of my friends. Um, like I would be like, "Hey, remember that one time that we went like to that place and like we did this and that and that and this happened and that?" And they'd be like, "Um, no, not at all." I'd be like, "What, dude? You told me that was like one of the most amazing nights of your life, and you don't remember it?" Nah. I wanted to ask if you know anything about my grandfather's accident. I really don't know much beyond the rumors. The sheriff may have more information, but even he probably doesn't know anything that isn't in the report. It happened before either of us worked here. Okay, I think I'll have a chat with the sheriff then. Sure thing. His office is to your right. Should I show him this taser? Yeah, that won't get me into trouble at all. <laughs> um, what about What's this? your opinion on yeah. this church? Yeah, is this church suspicious? I think it's a nice enough church. Why? I don't know. The priest seemed odd. Kind of pushy. Yeah, I get your point. But I know the guy. He's harmless. If you say so. 
Do we have to worry about that priest? Is he gonna, like, put my life in danger in some sort of way? I don't want to show him that. All right. What about the cigarettes? I don't want to show him that. <laughs> I understand. What about the snow I don't want to nope. show him that. I totally understand. All right. Um, well, gotta go. We gotta See go. See ya. Bye. Uh, what's, what's going on? The bulletin board kind of... Various kinda, notices yep. and a wanted poster. Who's the wanted guy? Various notices and a wanted poster. Maybe I'll find him and I want to collect the... Uh, a medieval the bounty. fortress near an ocean. Probably supposed to be somewhere in Europe. A medieval fortress near an ocean. Probably oh, supposed to be somewhere in Europe. A bunch of cops lining up for a photo. Of course, it's their station, yo. Alright, we can't touch the files. I shouldn't mess with the fax machine or the desk. I need you to do something. How can I help us? It's my mother's birthday this weekend. You'll have to get her a gift. A uh, gift? Like what? I don't really know your mother. For Christ's sakes, all moms are the same. Just use your imagination. I'm expecting something nicely wrapped on my desk by the end of the week. Uh, okay, boss. What an asshole! And he's not doing any work! What is he doing? Like, playing darts? What is he- what is he up to right now? Just sipping on his coffee and telling this guy to work harder, otherwise lunch is gonna be cancelled. Are you serious with yourself? Sheriff? Hey, Sheriff? What's the deal with that bum? What bum? You know, I'm gonna sit down first. Hello, Sheriff. Do you have a moment? <laughs> Not really. I Make it, it quick. I just sat down. I didn't click on the Sheriff. I love that the conversation just started. Alright, so Sheriff, uh, what's up with this deal? Do you know what happened to Joseph Rain in 81? Exactly. He had a stroke in the woods, that's what happened. If that's all there is, why would Sheriff Truman open an investigation? It was just standard procedure. A general occurrence report always has to be filed. I see. Did you know him at all? No, I haven't been in town for long. Man sure has one hell of a reputation, though. It's been over a decade since he was put in that wheelchair, and people still talk about the man he used to be. It's like he was a cult leader or something. Sounds like a conspiracy theory to me. Hmm. Could be, but you know what they say. Things too good to be true usually are. Hmm. Could I have a look at that report? Yeah. Absolutely not. Oh. They're official police documents. Why not? I thought filed police reports are public record. Not in this state, they ain't. What? That's a lie. That is a bald face flipping lie. You're a sly mother. Let's see. Lenny, a little help here? Don't you agree that he's taking by the book too far? Well, uh, boss, she is his granddaughter, really. I don't think it's any... Don't you think I know that? There are rules. Am I the only one in here who cares about the law? Too much coffee? Try not to pop a vein. <laughs> you want to see the inside of a cell? Oh, cuff me, officer. Spare me the torment of your rhetorical questions and veiled threats. Uh, just follow the rules like everyone else. I've had enough of this nonsense. Fine. Oh, damn it. I have all the questions, yo. Can I talk to you still? Let's, let's look at this. That must be the sheriff. He looks grumpy. Yep, yep. I click on your face. Hello, sheriff. Mind if I ask you a few more questions? If you must. All right, good. Okay, we didn't lose our opportunity to, like, talk to him more. Do you know anything about this church? What's your opinion on this church? It's a fine church. I go there myself every Sunday. Well, I don't know about your opinion on the church if you tell us say it's fine because you don't go there every Sunday. I mean, look at your behavior and That's your attitude. You're a, you're a douche. And a bad person. I hate you. Besides, is that the sheriff with the president? A photo of the sheriff shaking hands with some bald guy in a Might suit. Might be the mayor. Probably the mayor. It's always the mayor. It's always the mayor. I told you it's always the mayor. Just some photo. I can't see it clearly from here. Neither can I. It's a medal. Just some photo. Yeah, right. Along, a I gold just... medal of some right. kind. Okay, I guess. Maybe halfway through. That's no good. We're gonna have to cancel lunch today. Again? Oh man. 
Your motivation should be not sure where those doors priority. lead. I should go check it out. If you say you should go check it out, then I'm not going to be uh, opposed to that idea. Please go check it out. Oh, those are the cells? Wait. Dude's not going to be like, don't walk into the cells because there are prisoners there? I thought prisoners should be more protected than police reports. Like... What if this guy just gives me something right now? Or I give him something? Nobody's here? Hello? Hello? No wanted posters. I'm disappointed. Brilliant idea to leave those lying around next to evidence lockers and locked cells. Yeah. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna take something if I can. An Let's axe, look at it. A sledgehammer and some other heavy tools. Can I take any of them for myself? Cause uh, that too would be awesome. To around, and too right. noisy to use in here without okay. getting caught. Well, I don't want to like cut him out of his cell, but just it's... a bunch of. All right, so let's turn this TV off because this is annoying the hell out of me. Thank nice. you. That was getting annoying. Right? I, cool guy, dude. Cool, cool prisoner. Maybe it's just like he's un un wrongfully thrown in there. Alright, let's uh, look at they these. They look sturdy enough. Wouldn't be able to break them open without taking my time and making a lot of noise. Alright, fine. Let's talk to this guy. Sup, bum? Looks like an incarcerated bum. Hey. Hi there. Hey, look at him. He's like a cheap, uh, like insurance fraud looking kind of guy. What are you in for? So, why'd they put you in that cell? Uh, well, uh, it, it's all just a big misunderstanding. Oh, Is yeah? that so? Yeah, I, I didn't mean to steal anything. I was just using my pockets to move the beer to the checkout. Ah. That's the worst excuse I have ever heard. For your information, I happen to have a deadly fear of shopping carts. I take my last statement back. This excuse is even worse. Hey, it wasn't your father who was killed by a shopping cart when you were eight. Uh, I sure hope not. To be fair, mine wasn't either. It was just Uncle Bob. But that doesn't mean it was any less traumatic, mind you. To this day, I still get nervous breakdowns at grocery stores. <laughs> I think I've heard enough, buddy. You're right. We should stop before the flashbacks begin. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, can you distract Lenny? But why would I want him to distract Lenny? You need to keep the blonde cop out there busy for a while. I do? Ten bucks says you do. Hmm. So I can go through the records. Services in this matter are worth at least twenty bucks. Nine. Fifteen. Eight. Fine. Ten. Seven. <sighs> Deal. Good. So, uh, what am I doing again? Distract that young cop in the lobby. I don't care how you do it, as long as you keep him occupied for a while. Okay then. Let me know when. Will do. That was good bargaining skills with a with a bum who was trying to uh, steal some cheap beer because seven dollars to him is still like seven dollars, you know. Uh, Clean four? Funny. What? Are you serious? No way! All right. So I'm assuming that. Well, I thought the files and the records and everything were going to be behind the the sheriff over there, but I guess they're kept over here. Uh, but what what could I find in an evidence locker? I mean, I suppose. Too heavy to carry. I just suppose a bunch of boxes filled with these are just evidence lockers with evidence in them and the files and the police reports are actually in fact behind the mayor. I mean not the mayor, uh what you call him, sheriff. I'll need a key. Wait, so why am I distracting the guy? Let's think about these. If I ever need to find evidence, I'll Alright then, um A jail cell. A jail cell. Hey. Hi there. Okay, gotta see ya. All right. Well, I don't understand why I would need to uh, distract him. I don't hey, think the jail is off limits. You shouldn't be in there. Now oh, you tell. I just heard someone yelling. Uh, I think that guy in the cell needs some help. Oh, the files over here. Ah, oh, what now? Yep. There we go. Have to make this quick. That's what's happening. Search files. Okay, let's have a look. All right, let's see what's going on. 
So August 16th, 81, 1140 p.m., an individual was encountered on the side of the dirt road a few miles from Conwell Springs, blindly walking forward with his eyes wide open. The subject was identified as a Joseph Rain. He did not respond when touched or spoken to. He appeared to be dirty from head to toe and wet up to his knees. So he must have been in, like, water, right? Like some sort of swamp or pond or pool or something. Mr. Rain was fiercely clutching a small tape recorder, complete with tape. Being cooperative, he could be led into the squad car and transported back to town. So he was in shock, but he wasn't insane, because he was he was cooperative, you know? Alright, so that was uh, same night, slow later after processing, picked up by Mrs. Rain and brought uh, her along with Mr. Rain through the emergency room at the community clinic. Oh, picked up Mrs. Rain and brought her along with Mr. Rain to the emergency room, okay. And, uh, next morning upon routine inspection of the patrol car, a tape recorder was found discarded on the back seat. File as evidence in locker number 5. Alright, so this is whatever he was recording when, when he was found, so... Can I... now... find keys to the lockers? Hmm, I'm gonna have to get my hands on that recorder. Yeah. Um... Okay, let's find the key to locker number oh, 5. Oh, okay, that's, that's simplified. Got it. There we, oh, wow, okay. Um, didn't have to do much for that. I'm gonna wait for Lenny to come back. Hey, Lenny! We used to play play games when we were kids, remember? <laughs> I'm just joking. I don't. Let's go back in here. Lenny, I need you to do something. How can I help us? It's my mother's birthday this weekend. Oh, perfect distraction. Alright, um, hey, can I say thank you real quick to you? Thank hey. you, sir. Hi there. Yeah. Okay. See. All right, evidence lockers. We need locker number five. All right, got it. That was number five. Wasn't it one, two, three, four? Five? Yeah, cool. All right. Um, should I leave to check? Yeah, let's just leave and then I'll check it out. I don't want to face, like, consequences that may be unbeknownst to me, like, you know, sticking around for too long. Hi, right, Lenny, can I say bye to you? So I'm not, like, super suspicious. Hey, Lenny. Hey. Hello, Kathy. What's up? Uh, I just wanted to tell you, just, just remembered that we used to play games when we were kids. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. I don't remember that. Imagine if I showed him this stuff. Imagine if I did this. No, 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 no. Well, All right. gotta go. See ya. All right, bye. We're gonna check that. Hey, uh, um, Kathy, wait. What? What? Do you eat foot? I, I mean, food? Absolutely not. I feed on human misery. I, uh. Relax, Lenny. Yes, I do eat food. Oh, well, great. Can I buy you food sometime? And also buy food for me? And, and <laughs> then maybe. We can eat the food together? <laughs> oh, nervous kid. Um. No, God, no. Absolutely not. And actually, I'd rather eat a foot. These are all bad. Like, put into order of the horribleness of just severe rejection and letdown. Just, just put in that order. So we're just going to go with a simple no. Poor guy. I mean, he doesn't have bad intentions. Look at him, just like sweet little boy getting pushed around. He's like a doormat, and he's no self confidence, self esteem, and can't even talk to me. No. I'm really busy right now. Maybe later. Oh. Okay. See ya. See ya. All right. Didn't break this guy's heart. He's already, you know, dealing with enough shit. He's already being beat down by his boss, and he's probably not enjoying life quite a lot. All right. We're going back to Rain Residence. We're gonna talk. Grandma again. We have some stuff to show her. Police report. We gotta listen to the tape together. Maybe not together, actually. Let's, let's listen to it just by ourselves. Alright, well, we did that already. Let's see if we can listen to the tape, too. Alright, well, let's rewind it. Let's rewound. Note to self. 
Remember, the perfect bouquet consists of three red roses, a blue violet, and two yellow tulips. I've been working on my research in the attic at night. I just don't want her to worry. She has enough to think about with everything that's been going on lately. With Sharon and Kathy. Anyway, I'm getting closer to finding the source. I have a theory, but I need help. I'm gonna have to involve somebody else. Sounds like he might have gone insane. Sounds like he might have stumbled upon something crazy. Oh, am I gonna hit the record button? Imagine that. Um, we need to take the tape out. It it does say that I can. All right then. Play this empty tape. <laughs> no, I won't. I can recombine it. I I guess I can recombine the the cassette with the dictaphone and. Uh, um. The tape think Grandpa about? had on him when he was found in '81. Oh, I thought now that I've listened to it, there might be something extra. Standard micro tape labeled investigation. It should play fine in Mr. Dicto. Yeah, I should play in the dictaphone. Uh, maybe I should put it back in a dictaphone so that I can play it for for Grandma. Grandma, Grandma, are you still there? Are you alive? Are you awake? Oh, here oh, you are. Oh, hello, dear. I like your excitement when you see me. You're still drinking tea on the coffee table? Mary Elizabeth Rain, my grandmother on my father's side. And uh, her mother's name is Sharon, so that we know. Let's talk to her again. Sit down on the couch. Mind if we talk for a bit, Grandma? I got stuff that I gotta Not at all, dear. What's oh, on your mind? I thought she's all gonna be like, eh, because she kind of paused for a second. All right, let's show her the police report. Wait, let's let's try to have a good segue to asking about the attic. Let's not be too blunt about it and be like, yo, my grandma's in the attic. I'm gonna go, you know, just show her the report. I got the dictaphone already. I don't think there's anything else in there I need to mention to her. I think you should ask her before you attempt to go into her attic. Hey, Grandma, do you recognize this tape recorder? Oh, yes, Mr. Dicto. Joseph used to carry that thing with him everywhere. He could be absent-minded at times. It helped him remember things. Uh, okay then. Would you mind if I took a look in the attic? I suppose it would do no harm. Come with me. Thanks, Grandma. You're welcome, dear. Be careful now. Thanks, Grandma. You could have told me where the light is. The bulb looks burned out. I'll have to replace it. Uh, we need light. Nothing. The bulb must be burned what, out. What? You want me to search in the darkness? That's not even fair. Can I go back down and uh, find some light bulbs somewhere that maybe Grandpa used to have? Alright, well, we're going into the dark. Venturing into the darkness. There's gotta be something I can use. So how about the, the lighter? Can I use this? Nah, it's drafty in here and almost out of fuel. Gonna need it for my smokes. Wait. It, it doesn't matter if it's drafty. That is the whole idea behind Zippos. Zippos are lighters to be used in, like, heavy wind. And it was so light, like, stay lit. Alright, well, we can't, we can't really light this room. Maybe a cigarette? <laughs> I don't know. Um... There doesn't seem to be anything that I can interact with here, actually, surprisingly. So I'm, I'm asking myself the question, what am I doing here? Do I maybe need to replace this light bulb? The bulb looks burned out. I'll have to re You know what, let's go downstairs and see if we can find a light bulb. Can I take the light bulb from this lamp? Genius. I'm a genius. Free light bulb. Score. I'm a freaking genius, more like light bulb. Either this was a case of sudden kleptomania, or I actually have a good use for this thing. Both. Baby. Both. Standard light bulb. I'm going upstairs. I didn't know upstairs went straight up into the attic. I guess that makes sense, because uh, my old house also 
like the second floor was the attic. Um, but the second floor was kind of more like the third floor, so I don't know. Um, let's, oh yeah, light bulb. Hello. The bulb looks burned out. Yes, oh. yes, yes. Yes, combine with these. Great. There we go. Sweet. Let's turn the light on. Awesome. What's going on here? Hmm. Um, is a teddy bear? Is that another teddy bear? Mr. Bear! <laughs> that was burned with the lighter? There? How did Good you? Idea. You just keep watch. I'll do the surgery. No, I want you back, Teddy. Mr. Bear. I want you back in my Good life. Alright, um Shelves. Various Let's books see. and office supplies. Nothing in particular. Nothing in particular catches okay. the eye. Well, there's definitely a book that we're gonna be taking, because uh this book look looks pretty a thick interesting. Book about math. Oh yeah. Oh oh yes, please. I'm all about learning and science. Coffee. Uh, we're definitely not gonna drink from that coffee cup, but let's Decades take a look at it. Coffee. Lovely. Really, nobody came to take this away. There's coffee in the coffee cup. It looks like someone was doing geometry. I can't make much sense of it. So I think the the, the grandfather was some sort of mathematician. An old typewriter covered in cobwebs. Definitely worth taking. I I say you should, you should take it with your papers. Just some old bills. Nothing interesting. Nothing. Empty. Okay. All right. Um. I, a why? worn office chair on wheels. I'm feeling a sudden urge Do to it. erase. Do it. Down the stairs. Here we go. Math book. Let's read it. Let's read all of it. Alright, bookmarks. There's the yellow bookmark. It's about pi. 3.14159. Alright, let's flip the blue one. The Fibonacci sequence. The 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21. And then what is the next one? 34. And then 55 ish. 55. Let me show you how to count all the way to 55. If you don't know what I'm referring to, just look up 55 on YouTube. Um, yeah, this is the edition table for that. So, all right, cool. All right, um, cool. Interesting. Prime numbers. All right, then. Okay. I mean, I know about all of these. Cool. <laughs> Alright, maybe I got too close to that. Alright, so what else is over here? The briefcase. Let's look through the briefcase. Oh, damn. Locked briefcase. Um... It's got to be one of those numbers, I feel like. It could be the Fibonacci number or the sequence. It could be... Why don't we try um, Fibonacci, which should be... Uh, usually, it's 0, 1, 1, 2, but we'll start with the 1. Um, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8... Yeah, that would have been too easy. I doubt the book alone is enough to solve this. Ha! Okay. Um, alright. Did you, by the way, did you, uh, did you see that it says Fragile here? It must be Italian. Fragile! Um, there's an old mirror over here, too. But I think we're done here. Let's turn off the lights and just go back downstairs, because I, I don't want my grandma's electricity bill to be too much you know that would be just uncool but anyway guys i think i'm gonna call it an episode here but thank you so much for watching it this time thank you for your time and attention uh if you liked it leave a like tell me what you think about it in the comment section tell me about your like theories and stuff you know like without any spoilers we'll see you guys later bye